Hi, do you know what's delicious? Mustard. Do you know what's not delicious? Mustard gas. The first use of mustard agent in chemical warfare was in 1915 by the Germans in World War I against British and Canadian soldiers. It is colorless, and the only indication of it in the area is its smell. Some soldiers have described it as rotten apples or garlic, others as horseradish or even perfume. Two misnomers. Mustard agents are named as such due to their smell and have nothing to do with mustard plants. Mustard agents are liquid at room temperature and not actually gases. They were aerosolized to be used as weapons. It can stay in the area for days or weeks, and because the effects are not immediate, soldiers can receive a high dosage before realizing it. It can stick on clothing and be spread to others. Exposure to mustard gas is lethal in about one percent of cases, but can effectively incapacitate soldiers. Its properties cause blistering and discoloring of the skin. It can cause burning of the mucous membranes in the respiratory system when inhaled. The powerful effects that chemicals such as mustard gas had in warfare prompted government-funded research. Autopsies of those who died of mustard agents revealed decreased levels of lymphocytes, a type of white blood cell. The same scientists who were involved in military research looked at possible cancer treatments. During World War II, the first therapeutic experiments involved intravenously injecting sulfur and nitrogen mustard into cancer patients. Those who specifically benefited were those with blood cancers, such as Hodgkin's lymphoma. The first chemical to be used against cancer was a nitrogen mustard, mechlorethamine. Back then, it had the name of mustine, but it is most recently known as mustergen. Mustards have this general structure: in the middle, there's the Lewis base B, which can donate an electron pair. At the end, there are two carbon chains with a leaving group X. These groups form cyclic ionic compounds, which are good acylating agents. Mustard gas has a sulfur in the middle with two chlorines at the end. This is the structure of mechlorethamine. As you can see, it looks a lot like mustard gas, just with some slight differences. It is a nitrogen mustard. This means that instead of our Lewis base B being a sulfur atom in the middle, we have a nitrogen connected to a methyl group and a lone pair of electrons instead. So what are alkylating agents and why are they bad for DNA? As we know, DNA is comprised of two strands. In order to replicate DNA, the two sister strands must be separated. Alkylating agents work to add alkyl groups on the nitrogen atom of the guanine base on DNA. With the alkyl group stuck on the DNA, it becomes impossible for the DNA strands to open up, and this eventually leads to cell death. Mechlorethamine in an acidic environment has lone electrons that are able to kick off a chlorine group. By doing this, it creates a bond and creates a cyclic ion with a positive charge. The lone pair on the amine group of the guanine base then opens up the ring, thus getting acylated. This process then repeats with a sister strand, thus forming a crosslink. This connection is what restricts the replication mechanism because the DNA can no longer separate. We can imagine two very social friends. They stay together for a while, but eventually move on to make more friends. However, there can be clingy friends who just invite themselves to everything and prevent these two friends from hanging out with new people. In our analogy, the two girls represent the strands of DNA that open up to replicate. However, in the presence of mechlorethamine, the clingy friend. The hug or the formation of crosslinks prevents them from functioning properly. Though the use of mechlorethamine changed over time from being used in chemical warfare to being the first useful anti-cancer chem chemotherapy, it is now no longer commonly used and was discontinued by the FDA in 2018. Since the mechanism for mechlorethamine is non-selective, it had the danger of damaging healthy cells as well. Now we have treatments that are more selective and are lower risk than mechlorethamine, but we should never forget how it helped us open the door to effective cancer treatments. Please clap.